Sacramento Zoo fans. We are live here at the zoo hanging out with some really cool animals as well as some really cool keepers. Kelsey? Hello. Petra? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh. Okay. Hi. <laughs> well, we want to thank all of you guys for tuning in to all of our Facebook lives. It is so great having y'all support. And just so you know, the zoo is open, so feel free to go to our website, saczoo.org, and you can learn more about reserving your ticket to come visit us at the zoo. Today we're going to be learning about some really cool animals, kangaroos, wallabies, emus, with some amazing keepers, like you met a few moments ago. Say hello. 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 Alright, you want to tell us your names and what you do here? Yeah, so I'm Kelsey, and I'm the primary Okapi and kangaroo yard keeper here. And my name's Petra. I'm a keeper that likes to float around in lots of different sections, including the kitchen, ungulates, and okapi group. Awesome! Love that! And if you guys have any questions for these awesome keepers about kangaroos, wallabies, and emus, feel free to give us a shout in the comments section. Otherwise, keepers, take it away. Inform us about these beautiful animals. <laughs> yeah, so welcome to the Sac Zoo's Australian Outback. So all the animals in here are endemic to Australia, meaning you can only find them in Australia in the wild. So we have red kangaroos, emus, and yellow-footed rock wallabies in this habitat together. Oh, sorry, I'm doing a little <laughs> tour. Sorry, yeah. got so this is our whole yard. So right up here, right in front, is Ovi, our red kangaroo. We have four red kangaroos here at the Sac Zoo. So we have Ovi, we have Fluff, Jordan and Brody. And then you can kind of see in the back corner there, we have our two emus. We have Shirley and Shmi. And then we also have two female yellow-footed rock wallabies on exhibit. We can head this way a little bit to see if we can get a shot of them. They're hanging out in the shade over here <laughs> in the stump oh, area. Yeah, yeah nice. so we have two yellow-footed rock wallabies named Bell and Audrey. It's okay if we get a little closer? Yeah, I think we can get a little closer. They kind of blend in with the shade. Yeah, there so wallabies go. especially have really good camouflage. So you'll see the coloration of their fur kind of matches even the dustiness of the ground and the logs and the stumps we have there. So that's how they kind of live and camouflage in the wild as well. These guys you'd find in southern Australia region. Um, there are various species of wallabies, so we're very fortunate to have yellow-footed rock wallabies. Not many zoos actually have these guys. And their distinct characteristic is the rings on their tail. It's probably a little hard to see from this angle. But those rings do help, again, kind of mimic the dirt and everything that you would see in their rocky habitat. Very cool. Awesome, they're very cute. Hi, hi. <laughs> Yeah, so we can venture over this way and we have our two emus over here. So we have Shirley and Shmi, a male and a female emu. And so these guys are rat types or flightless birds. And so there are five different kinds of rat types. You have emus, you have ostriches, which are the larger rat types, which we also have at the Sac Zoo with the zebras. And then you have cassowaries, rayas, and kiwis. Ooh, very cool. What's one of your favorite things about working with the emus? <laughs> um, the emus are pretty awesome. You don't really get to work with these large of birds. Um, they can be pretty charismatic as well. Shirley, our female, is a very curious bird. She tends to like to come up and look at what's in your shovel and kind of peck at what's going on in your shovel. Um, it's also just very different than birds that can fly. Mm. Um, you don't have to kind of worry about them being above your head um, or kind of um, making sure that you're kind of out of their space up top. Um, these guys are large and can run away if they really need to. Yeah. They awesome. remind me of dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially their feet. Very dinosaurian and mm -hmm. you can it's really fun personally for me to watch them because you can tell when they're thinking about something. Um, very smart birds. They also love water. Um, when it gets really hot here at the zoo, uh, we like to give them baths with the hose. And sometimes we'll even set up an oscillating sprinkler for them and they just love to pop down right in front of it so and get nice and wet and it helps to keep them nice and cool. Oh, that's amazing. I love that too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, very cool. Well, guys, if you're just tuning in, we are live here at the Sacramento Zoo in our roo yard, kangaroos, wallabies, and emus, and we're learning so much about them. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in our comment section, and we will try to get to them. We do have a question about emus, about um, how fast they can run. So emus can probably run up to 30 to 40 miles per hour at their time. species in here interact with one another? Um, they may occasionally kind of encounter each other, but for the most part they do kind of keep to their own species or kind of their own area. Um, that is one thing that we always have to take into consideration if you have what we call a mixed species exhibit like this. So just making sure that everyone kind of has their own space and everyone's individual personalities work with each other. So sometimes the kangaroos and the emus like kind of cross paths, but they usually just kind of or run away to their own area, and then the wallabies also have lots of stumps and different uh, limbs that they can jump onto and just kind of rest there that no other animals will get to. Awesome. Pam wants to know how old the kangaroos are. So with the four kangaroos, we have Flux and Jordan. They're our youngest. They are about five years old. They're both male. Brody, we don't have an exact birth date for her, but we guess she might be around eight years old. And Ovi is actually 18 years old, so he is a very, very old man. All right, I saw you guys putting out some different treats for them. So what exactly were you giving them? Um, so these guys right now, we did put out a variety of browse. So these guys are grazers and browsers, so they primarily eat a lot of grasses and different leaves. So right now, Aaron is showing you guys some grapevine that we actually got donated from a very um, great to guess. <laughs> um, so these guys, again, really like browse as well. So they'll eat mainly the leaves. You'll see there's some grapes there too they might nibble on. And then we also provided them with some bamboo. So bamboo kind of goes with the grasses that they would eat a lot. And then the grapevine um, is the browse. And these guys, they also will give a variety of other browse as well. So they really like mulberry and elm. Um, and then they also can get a variety of produce, so they really do like their sweets, just like most animals. So grapes and banana they really enjoy, but they also really like carrots and leafy greens. Um, romaine lettuce is a favorite amongst a lot of animals, um, and dandelion as well. Oh, cool. Thanks for that info. Let's see, some questions here. Jackson would like to know how high the kangaroos can hop. So. Uh, the kangaroos, when they're jumping up vertically, uh, can reach at anywhere to around five to almost six feet. Wow. Um, now, they can actually cover more distance going horizontally. Uh, male kangaroo in a single bound on a really good flat stretch can go anywhere between 24 to almost 26 feet. So they can leap farther than they can jump higher. That was a great question, Jackson. Everybody's like, I want snacks. Very cool. All right, guys, again, if you have <laughs> questions, feel free to leave them in our comment section. We would be happy to get to them. And thank you guys again so much for um, checking out all our Facebook Lives and supporting the Sacramento Zoo. You can visit saczoo.org and you can learn more about reserving your ticket to come visit the zoo. We are open and we'd love to see you guys. We have a lot of exciting things going on at the zoo. These wallabies are so cute. <laughs> so sorry, Kelsey, what were you going to say? Oh yeah, so you guys might have just seen Brody. She did kind of go up on her hind legs there to get all tall uh, when he and Shirley wanted to share the mathopod bowl with her. <laughs> um, so kangaroos, they do have those really, really large feet and very, very powerful legs and feet there. So these guys do hop, as most of you know. And they are one of the only animals that really do hop to kind of move around. Awesome. 
Yeah, we just got a question actually from Chris. She was wondering if the kangaroos only hop or do they walk? Many other most cool mobility things. Yeah, say? so primarily to get around, they will hop. That's kind of their fastest and easiest way to move around. But they will also kind of move um, on all fours plus their tail. Um, so almost five limbs there. Um, so that just kind of goes a little slower. Yeah, uh, fun fact that I learned recently about them. So uh, a kangaroo's musculature in their hind legs, the muscles actually kind of stop right. Uh, that's almost halfway down their shin, and yeah. then the rest of it's all tendon. It acts like a rubber band. And Ooh. it actually takes them more energy to do that kind of hop crawl that you'll see them do sometimes when they use that tail than it does to actually do a fully, uh, fully extended hop. So they have to be able to control that rubber band tendon a lot more, which you know, takes a lot more energy out of them to do, yeah. and to just let it snap as it normally would. Oh, that's great information. Thank you. Oh, cool. All right. Do you mind if we kind of like walk around and check out the habitat? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Which way would be best? We don't want to. Go. Yeah. We can walk over this way. We can yeah. see where uh, mm -hmm. where Bell went off to. You guys have a pretty cool brew yard here. We've got some little tunnels. Yeah. So it's a really nice kind of open area for Hello. us to have all the various animals here. You can see there are some animals kind of in the back there hanging out in the shade, so it's kind of a different area they can hang out with. And they are provided a lot of areas um, that have stumps and limbs so that especially the wallabies can hop up there. Um, they usually live in rocky terrain, so that kind of helps uh, mimic their natural habitat. We have the tunnels and the hills to kind of provide more shade. It is a little more of an open, uh, dustier kind of habitat, um, similar to what you could find in Australia as well. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Alright guys, if you're just tuning in, we are live here at the Sacramento Zoo. We're hanging out with some kangaroos, wallabies, emus, and some really awesome sea bears. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in our comment section. Again, feel free to visit our website, saczoo.org. You can learn more about reserving your ticket to come out and visit us. Yes, we are open and we would love to see you. So again, we have four ki red kangaroos here at the Sac Zoo, two yellow-footed rock wallabies, and two emus. So it's a very nice mixed species habitat here. Very nice. These wallabies are very, very cute. Can you tell us a little bit more about them? Just remind us about these guys. Yeah. So these guys again are yellow-footed rock wallabies. There are a variety of species, and we are very lucky because very few zoos actually have this species of wallaby. So their main characteristic that uh, unique to these guys is they kind of have that ring tail. Um, they're actually also known as a ring-tailed wallaby. And so that helps mimic kind of their natural terrain, which is southern Australia, more in rocky areas. Um, so even a lot of times, they actually camouflage into their stump areas really well. So sometimes when I'm cleaning in here, I accidentally kind of spook them because I didn't even realize that they are there. That's just how great they camouflage. Blend into right in! Their <laughs> areas. Yeah. Cool. If you're wondering the difference between a kangaroo and a wallaby, essentially they do have the same anatomy and everything, um, but it does mainly have to do with size and kind of their uh, range of where they live. So wallabies, usually people say if the animal is about hip uh, height is lower, they are considered a wallaby. So that also includes quokkas, which are kind of a viral animal that you see a lot in videos. <laughs> Um, and then anything kind of hip and above usually is more of a kangaroo. And anything kind of in between can be a wallaby. Um, also another difference uh, that Petra told me about <laughs> um, is that kangaroos usually um, can travel in larger ranges. So they might migrate a little more than wallabies, which tend to kind of stay in one general region. Yeah. Um, so wallabies aren't really equipped in their musculature and luggage to go for long distances versus kangaroos. Very cool, great info. And these guys are marsupials. Can you tell us a little bit about marsupials? So marsupials are animals that you will typically only find in Australia, uh, New Zealand, and New Guinea. North America does actually have one marsupial here, uh, the Virginia opossum, which you can actually find right here in your own backyard. They're very common. They are and very cute. Very cute, yes. <laughs> we, we love our opossums. Um, 
They are a mammal, so they do have warm blood. They give birth to live young, and they nurse their young with milk. But what makes marsupials really special is that they have a pouch. Now, when their young are born, um, they're born kind of a little underdeveloped, I guess you could say. Um, and typically what will end up happening is that the um, baby, let's say, will take a kangaroo, for example, and a baby kangaroo is called a joey. Um, the baby will actually travel up into the pouch and then latch on into the nipple and stay in there for a while as it grows and develops. Mm. Is that something that makes them very, uh, very special? It's very kind of trademark characteristic of marsupials yeah. is having that pouch. Very cool extreme information. We had a question from Shelly about whether these guys prefer the summer or winter weather in Sacramento. Hmm. Probably they enjoy spring and fall yeah. the best, honestly. <laughs> not too hot and not too cold. Yeah. Um, Australia can have those extreme temperatures of like extreme hot and then generally pretty cold as well. Nice. So these guys are what we call crepuscular, meaning they are mainly active during dawn and dusk, which is generally when it's more of a mild temperature um, for both kind of seasons. Um, these guys typically in the summer will be napping kind of as they're doing now, which is very common as to what they would be doing in Australia. Um, we do feed these guys twice a day, generally when we first get here in the morning, and then pretty much in the afternoon right, right before we leave. So we kind of try to simulate the dawn and dusk um, activity for them. As it does get hot throughout the day, they tend to, uh, they'll follow where the, because you know, the shade does move right. throughout the habitat as the sun moves. Uh, and they typically will tend to follow the shade as it moves around the habitat. So we've got lots of places for them to stay cool and sometimes we'll offer them uh, ice treats, yeah. um, either just frozen water, something cool to lick, or sometimes we'll even freeze a little bit of produce inside that ice as well. And then in the winters, these guys are pretty spoiled as well and we do provide heaters for them. They also have these very large heat mats that we provide for them that they can lay on to keep warm in the colder winters. Very cool. <laughs> thank you so much for answering all the questions here. And thank you all so much for tuning in to our Facebook Live in our kangaroo yard. If anybody has any last minute questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. But we will probably be wrapping up in just a moment. Let's see where that cute wallaby went. Oh, Nanny on, Nanny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Going on a little tour. Nice. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning into our Facebook Live today. Again, feel free to visit our website, saczoo.org, and you can learn more about coming out to visit the zoo and reserve your tickets online. Hope everybody has a great day. Stay hydrated.